Hello again. So now we're registering the item inventory slot update thing <laughs> with the images. So now let's work on actually spawning the item into our character's hand. So we can jump over to our other project. Yeah. Only thing I've done in this one so far uh, off screen is I added that craft resources icons pack and then I updated these so that when I pick them up so like for the hoe I'm using the shovel the hammer is actually a hammer and the axe is a saw so just to have an actual instead of those weird little icons that I had but that's all I've done off screen so the way we can do this is let's go into our player blueprint And when we are adding an item to our slot, we can check to see if that slot number is equal to the hotbar selected, because that means we are, that's the one we're holding. If it's equal to hotbar selected, we'll add a branch. Now we only really need to worry about this on the true line so the false will come off and do its own thing because this is where we're registering to see if it's a hotbar at all. If it is equal to the hotbar icon selected then we will create a new function called spawn item to hand. This will take an input of our item info item info and then once here, we can do a break. And we're going to do a switch on item type. So switch right there, because some things we won't want spawning into the hand, like seeds or certain props, this will spawn and attach to something else. So this will let us be able to like, oh, it's a weapon. Okay, go in the weapon slot, tool, tool slot, etc., etc. So we can, now we'll need that, we'll need that still. So if it's a tool, then we want to spawn actor from class. Class will be fil fed in from there. On the spawn transform, let's type get socket transform of this mesh. Now the mesh highlighted here is the character's body mesh from our components tab. So this will have access to all of his bone sockets. So if we open him up, we can take a look and see which socket we will want to use. Drag up. Now he had one that was already pretty set up. The hand slash R slash weapon. Not really a fan of that naming convention. So F2 to rename hand R underscore socket. You can rename it whatever you want to. Just something as long as you know this is the right hand socket for tools in this case. Probably use it for weapons too if it works out. We can right click and add a preview asset so that we can see how the axe will look. Now it looks like he's kind of gripping it a little weird. Hard to tell sometimes in a T pose. So if we go to the preview controller, preview scene settings, we can use a specific animation. And I'm just going to use this attack sequence that we're going to be using for chopping. And we can back it up. Yeah, it's a little bit out of his hand. So with the hand socket selected not the hand bone if you select the hand bone you're gonna yeah we want to just drag this down somewhere about there now if you're using a different asset pack you might need different sockets depending on the tool I'll go over uh, I'll show you how to set up doing different sockets in a bit but for right now, this is working because our tools are all pretty much the same. So like even if I, let's see, right click, remove, right click, add, let's go for the hoe. So it's a little bit longer, but it has a different attack, uh, different animation anyway. So it'll work. Not terribly at least, but we got our socket. So hand R underscore socket. Let's go in here and this needs to match exactly capitalization and everything. That's kind of why I like renaming them. 
So handr underscore socket. Then once we've spawned the actor, we're going to right click and promote it to a variable. This is our spawned item, the item that we're currently holding in our hand. Now since this is a tool, and the tool might actually have different uh, needs based on what kind of tool it is that differs kind of from the rest of our item data, we can go into our tool folder and we're going to create an enumerator. So right click blueprint enumeration e underscore tool id. We can double click and open that up and we'll add four for now. So axe hammer uh, hoe and we're also going to have a watering can. You don't want to add any spaces, so it's just watering can run on. Save that. And then we can go into our base tool, open the full blueprint, and we can add that variable. So this will be tool ID, and it'll be of the enumerator type that we just made. So now when we come back in here, you'll notice this is a spawned item of the base item type. So it has access to all of the base values of it. We're off on our tool line, so what we can do is we can cast to base tool. And then from, so you notice from base item right here, which is what this is, if we try to get that tool ID variable, we cannot. But if we try to get it from our base tool cast, we can. So we can have all kinds of different things set up that's specific to tools, and then we know we can go into our tools and adjust them as we need to. But that way our base item doesn't get cluttered with the different needs of every item type. We can just set it into each individual base class. We can also, let's see, promote this to a variable that is our tool ref. And then we'll be able to pull directly from this when we need its animation or when we need anything else going on. Which our spawned item should have that, but if it has different needs, different sockets, this is where you could also go into the base tool type and add a name and then say this tool spawns at this socket appropriately or that socket appropriately. You can just add a socket variable, set it to be a name, and compile, and then this is the hand r underscore socket for most of mine. Then when we come in here and we're attaching the spawned item, because we want to attach that, we want to attach actor to component. The parent will be our mesh. And just to make sure this is clear, we'll do that. And the socket name can be pulled directly from our tool reference to plug into the socket. Hmm. That'll work, I don't care. So for the location rule, snap to target. Rotation as well, snap to target. Because we're always gonna spawn it at the hand, well, yeah, for now we are. But that'll just be a spawn point, and then it'll immediately snap to whatever socket that we're trying to set it up on. So you don't have to worry about, well, this other one's going to spawn in his right hand, but it's actually a left-hand socket. It'll be so quick, you won't even... I mean, it might be a, a hint of a flash, but should be fine. So then we'll attach actor to component. Just like that. Now, since we have a spawn item to hand, we are also going to need a destroy item in hand. And all this is going to do is everything that we spawn, we'll right click, convert to validated get, and if it's valid, then we'll destroy it. Same thing for the tool ref, if it's valid, oop, then we destroy it. Now off this first one, if this one is not valid, we still want it to continue on checking down the line, so is not valid goes directly into the next get. We don't want it trying to destroy an actor that doesn't actually exist, so we only want it to destroy if it is valid. Now if this one is valid, then we destroy actor just like that. 
compile that. Oh, my back hurts. All right. So now, once we've added the item to slot, we want to see if it is currently the hotbar selected. And if it is, then we want to not spawn item. We want to spawn item to hand. Well, we want to destroy item first. So we'll destroy, because this, you might think, well, if we're spawning something for the first time, we don't need to destroy anything. But this is just uh, safety cases, I guess. And plus, it's only doing it if the things are valid, and if not, it won't do anything at all, so it won't have any errors. Then we're going to spawn item to hand. And the item that we want to spawn, we are going to get the item info from our hotbar that is selected currently, because we're only doing this if the index matches our hotbar selected. So these will match. It'll be it'll feed through the right one. So we should if we jump out and try to pick up our axe or something, it should spawn in his hand. Whoa. All right. It has collision. <laughs> so in the player blueprint when we spawn it, let's grab all this, drag it this way a smidgen. And from the spawned item, we're going to set actor collision. Set actor enable collision. Hook that up here, that up there. Double click and drop it on down. Clean it up a little bit. So now we should be able to. Yeah. So now it's in his hand. But if we do anything, you'll notice that's the only one that ever gets spawned. So what we can do is on our scrolling thingies, we'll drag this one way over here. And once we're activating the highlight of the new item, let's get the item info from that icon that we have recently highlighted. We're going to break it open and we want to see if the item ID is equal to blank. If it is, we don't want to do anything. But if it's not, then we can feed it over into our spawn item and go from there. So we'll hide the unconnected pins here. Box select all this. Tap Q. Move this up. Activate highlight. We'll add a branch right there. So if we're selecting a new variable, and it's not equal to blank, then we're going to destroy the item in our hand and spawn our new item. And we can... You can either promote this to a new variable or I'm just going to copy this and then paste it over here. And get item info back it on up and we want to make sure that we plug in our hotbar selected variable so that'll go like that this is our wheel down so we'll do the same thing right now for the top so that we can just scroll through so we'll get the item info I gotta get you all a bigger bed and we're gonna break it open to see if it is equal to our blank ID, we'll get rid of any unnecessary pins. We'll box select everything and Q to clean it up. We'll add our branch. <laughs> we'll hook it up like that. Then if it's not equal to blank, we will destroy item in hand. And then we can basically copy this. Copy with control C, paste with control V, hook it up over here, drag it back, and admire our work. Now we can jump in. I'll pick up the first item, second, third, and now we can scroll through. You may notice I've gone to one that is empty, but I still have the axe in my hand. Now if we select one that is empty, we obviously don't want that to happen, so what we can do if it's equal to blank, 
we can copy our destroy item in hand and paste it up and then just hook it right there. And we'll do the same thing on the bottom. So if it's equal to blank, we just get rid of what's there. And if it's not, then we get rid of what's there and spawn the new item. So pick up the hoe, the hammer, the axe, scroll up, get to an empty one, and there's nothing there. Just like that. One thing we can do is if we don't have anything selected, we probably don't want this blue selector. So we could on destroy when we're selecting something that's not there, we can get our interact checker and we can set its visibility or set actor hidden in game. Set it is hidden if it's nothing there. And copy that and paste it to here. And set it's not hidden if we actually have something. Control C, Control V. Paste that there. Grab this top one, Control C, Control V. Just like that. So now it'll start off hit uh, visible, but we can adjust that later. So if I pick that up, pick that up, pick that up, scroll, scroll, scroll. Now it's hidden. Now I actually have a tool, something I would need to check the ground for. That's another way we can add a little bit of. Yeah. So. All right. So now. We can, let's do that for the first one real quick. Spawn item to hand. There's not. Ah, you know what? You know what we'll do? We'll just go to that actual interact checker thing. And we will set actor hidden in game. We'll just set that to true to start with. Hmm. Well, let's go to our spawn item in hand. And if we're doing this, if it's a tool, then we'll get our interact checker. And we'll just set actor hidden in game here. And say, no, you are no longer hidden. There we go. So now our tools will have their hit checkbox and other things might not. So, all right, I'll see y'all in the next one. We'll start setting up our inventory menu so that we can actually check our backpack, adjust tools and things and all that jazz. So I'll see y'all there.